Alright, where are my energy bars? Energy bars. Energy bars. Uh oh. Last one. Oh my. Okay, guess it's time to make some more. So as you can see, I'm down on my last energy bar. I guess it's time to make some more. If you're interested in seeing how I make my energy bars, stay tuned. Okay, so quickly before we get started. Some months ago, during the winter, I did a video where I introduced my new energy bars. And I had said at that time that those energy bars were based on a recipe that I had got from Lonnie at Far North Bushcraft and Survival. And I'm going to put a link to his video up here in the corner because Lonnie has a recipe that is, well, I've made it and I love it. I just thought I'd change it and put in some of my own flavors. So that's the recipe we're going to use today. And it combines two of my favorite flavors, chocolate and coffee. So let's get started and I'll show you the ingredients. Okay, so here is all the ingredients you need for this recipe. You can add other things to it more than what I've got here. And that's something that you may want to do. If you have some favorite flavors that you want to add in, then by all means do so. But fundamentally for my recipe, you need some peanut butter. I'm going to be using the Kraft Smooth Peanut Butter. I'm going to be using one cup of this, and I'm going to provide the recipe and the instructions in the show notes below. But just quickly, I'll be using one cup of Kraft Peanut Butter Personally, I prefer the natural, non-homogenized peanut butter, but it doesn't work out well for these bars because as the bars set, and if they get warm in your backpack, then the peanut oil does seem to separate from the peanut butter, and you don't want that leaking out in your backpack. So they stay a little more solid consistency if you're using the, the smooth peanut butter, something like a Kraft. It can be an opening. It doesn't have to be Kraft. I haven't found one necessarily to be better than the other. I'm also going to be using honey. Now the honey I'm going to be using is three quarters cup of honey. Now I just want to show you this if I can. This is a local honey producer here in Nova Scotia, but what's important to me is that it's unpasteurized, which means it has not been heated. And unpasteurized or non-pasteurized honey is better for you in the sense that the heat has not destroyed the characteristics of honey that give it that natural antibacterial uh, property. So one of the things I like about it, well, I like it for, for the health reasons, but also by adding it to the bars, I expect that the honey antibacterial anti properties will help keep the bars fresher longer. I have no proof for that. It's just my theory that it will help. Something else you're going to need is coffee. Now, the better the coffee, the better the flavor. The coffee I'm going to be using is something that we use on a fairly regular basis here at home, which is the coffee you can get at Costco, the Kirkland brand, but it is roasted by Starbucks. It's a medium roast is what they say. We actually think it leans towards the dark side. I prefer a dark roast coffee for myself and in my bars. And if I had had the time, I think I might have roasted up some of the Sumatra beans I had and used those. But just quickly, the bars are still very good with any coffee. Now, this is in the bean form, so I am going to grind it, and I'm going to grind it down to as fine a powder as I can get. And I am going to need three, uh, yeah, three quarters cup of coffee to go with it. Chocolate. You need also three quarters cup of chocolate. Dark chocolate. The darker the better. Now, I'm going to be using Hershey's Chippets for this one because that's what I had on ham. But in the past, I have used chocolate bars. Two examples of chocolate bars I have here at home are the Lind Chili chocolate bars, which is a dark chocolate, and, and one by Green and Black's, an organic dark chocolate with crystallized ginger pieces. Oh man, this is a nice chocolate bar. So I could break those up and use those for my chocolate, and I have, and it's done a very good job. Job. I will tell you, the darker the chocolate, the richer the flavor. The same thing with the coffee. The darker the coffee, the richer the flavor. Now, you also need oatmeal, so instant oatmeal is best. I haven't done it with large flake, slow cook oatmeal, but I think that I'm just going to stay with the instant because it's kind of a binder and also an energy source and a carbohydrate that is more of a long chain carbohydrate, gives you energy over a more sustained period. One thing I'm going to add to this that is going to be my personal preference, that's not necessary by any means, I haven't done it before, so it's a bit of an experiment, is I'm going to be using some cayenne pepper. Just a little bit of cayenne pepper because I find cayenne pepper and chocolate does add a nice flavor. Adds a little tiny bit of heat to it. And I'm going to be using these over the winter, so eh, maybe it will help. All right, so let's start the process. I'll show you what 
pots and pans and everything else you need and we'll get to making this as quickly as possible. Okay so step number one is to melt your peanut butter and your honey together and there's two ways of doing this. One is like I'm doing I'm using a double boiler so I've got water in the pot below and it's slowly melting the two ingredients together you do have to keep stirring the other way to do it is to do it directly in a pot, directly on the burner. But I will tell you, if you're going to do it that way, do it at a very low heat. And once you start, once the heat starts, keep stirring. So have everything ready before you begin this process. Not quite as critical with the double boiler because there's less of a chance that I'm going to scorch the honey or the peanut butter as they mix together in the double boiler very great chance of doing that if you put it directly in a pot directly on the heat especially if you don't have it at a very low heat it takes a little time but take your time do it right don't scorch your materials you don't want to burn these things all right when that's all melted and it just about is we'll add the rest of our ingredients okay so my peanut butter and honey are thoroughly mixed now I'm Turn, I've turned the heat off underneath the pot, but there's still boiling hot water underneath here to keep the warmth. This isn't necessary. I just thought it would be quicker this way. If I took this right off of the burner now, there would be enough warmth in the peanut butter honey mixture for the next step, which is the chocolate chips. I'm just dumping in the complete three-quarter cups of dark chocolate chips right away. They will melt very quickly. Just, but as I said before, keep stirring. I right, got a few stick in there. I got to get those off. Get all that chocolate goodness into the mixture, and I get to lick the spoon. So it'll take a minute for those chocolate chips to soften up, and they will start mixing through. I can start to see that happen. Alright, in one second I'll add the next ingredient. Alright, it took a little longer than I expected to get all the chocolate chips to melt. And they're not completely melted. There's still a little bit of lumpiness from the chocolate chips in there. But look at the difference. Look at the rich color. You can see a little bit of peanut butter on the end of the spoon and the chocolate chips where it's melted into the chocolate. So a little bit of lumpiness from the chocolate chips I don't think will hurt within the bar. Um, when I did it last time I used chocolate bars from 60 and 70 percent I think it was 70 percent dark cocoa chocolate bars and they melted very quickly so this is taking a little longer but I think it's because chocolate chips intended for cookies are intended to hold together more in the cookie anyway time for the next ingredient which is our coffee ground almost to a powder probably could have introduced that a little bit at a time Take your time putting this together. Now this raises a good point. My pot is very quickly starting to get full. I think I may end up having to use a large mixing bowl to do the next step, which is adding the oatmeal. It would have been smarter of me had I considered before I began, actually I thought it was going to work out, how big a pot I would need in order to mix all the ingredients in one single pot. I did need to use the, or I wanted to use, the double boiler for mixing the ingredients as they melt it together. But I think for the next step I'm going to be putting this into a large mixing bowl. Which, and it just means one more thing to wash. Alright, I think that's just about stirred through. You can start to see the consistency. Yes, you can see the, the coffee even though it is powdered. It's not going to dissolve any more than that. It is going to remain a little bit textured in the bars at the end. But uh, I think once you try it, you won't mind it, and I think you'll like it. All right, the next step is going to be me having transferred this into a mixing bowl and then adding the oatmeal. So I'll bring you back then. All right, transferring my chocolate, peanut butter, honey, coffee mixture into the mixing bowl. Probably could have did this right in the pot. I just wanted to make sure I didn't exceed the capacity of the pot. All right, I think that's it. As much as I'm going to get. 
All right, next ingredient, oatmeal. So I have my oatmeal here. I'm gonna add that in a little bit at a time. And you'll notice that I kept the bag of oatmeal back here because uh, you, you, this is kind of a judgmental thing. You wanna make sure that it's got enough thickness and consistency that when you're finished that the bars will be nice and firm. So I have two and a half cups of oatmeal to add, but Nothing wrong with adding a little more if you feel it needs it. So it took that amount very quickly. Oh, by the way, one other ingredient I added just before I took the mixture off of the double boiler was the cayenne. And although I didn't measure, I suspect it was about a teaspoon of cayenne for this entire mixture. So I'll let you know when I go to taste it if it added any degree of heat or spiciness to the chocolate. I know that sounds weird, but once you've tried chocolate with a little bit of cayenne or chili in it, yeah, I think you'll agree it's a nice flavor combination. I have hot chocolate that I enjoy during the winter and it, with hot with cayenne and a few other ingredients in it. And it, uh, I think this is gonna be just enough. It is really nice out on the trail with the cayenne and the other ingredients in it. And not only the flavor, but I think it actually does warm me up a little bit more. So I'm using a rubber spatula spoon kind of an affair here. Starting to think I would have been better off with a something a little stiffer than... That's not rubber, of course, silicone. That's what's used now. Something a little bit better. But this is mixing. And we're just about there. All right, let me mix the rest of this in and we'll go on to the next step. All right, this is thick. Oh, lost a little piece, that's mine. Okay, in truth, last time when I did this, I was able to get more of the oatmeal incorporated into the bar so that you didn't see the flex. It was pretty much all absorbed in, it was all dark. But that's not gonna affect the end product. What I'm liking but what I'm seeing is that there's a shiny nature to it and that means that none of the ingredients were burnt or anything now what i have here is a nine inch by nine inch aluminum baking pan or whatever you you call these devices and it's a this is a rather heavy duty one you can use any pan you want be aware of that the larger the pan, the thinner the bar, the smaller the pan, the thicker the bar and when it cools off you'll have to cut it accordingly I could line this with parchment paper or wax paper. It's not necessary. You don't have to grease it. You don't have to do anything other than put your mixture in. That came out nice and clean. Oh, lost another little piece. That's also mine. And spread it until you try to get it pretty much an even thickness all the way around the pan. Now this is cooling off quickly, so I want to make sure I get it evenly distributed. All right, I'll work on this and I'll show you what the end product looks like. All right, so I put the burrs in the 9x9 pan in the fridge for about an hour or so. Probably should have waited a little longer to make sure they were really nice and firm. I took them out of the fridge, set it on the counter, cut it with just a kitchen knife and separated the bars and put them on a plate. And this is what I got. 24 of these bars. Now I'm going to show you the size individually of the bars and there's a reason why I want to show you that. This is what I did last time. Almost three times the size of these bars. I couldn't finish one of these things. I was shaking, but from the caffeine and the chocolate in one of these bars alone. So I made the judgment to make them much smaller, and I'll pack it, package them up in, individually. If I feel I need more than one, I'll open up a second one. But my experience with these are there's plenty of energy in one of these things to carry you through to the end of your hike. Okay, let's talk about storage. Put those down. So the last time I made these, I decided to place some of them in wax paper, or parchment paper actually is what I used, 
and I put some of them in Ziploc bags and I put some of them in my vet food saver vacuum seal. So these are probably, they've got to be seven, eight months old now and what I found is if the ones that I, and I put some of them in the freezer and I left some of them out. So it was a bit of an experiment to see how they would last. None of them went bad. None of them were rancid. They were all edible right down, well I, I don't know about the last bar but I don't have any reason to think it won't be. What I did find however is putting the bars in the freezer kept them from separating a little longer. And what I mean by that is the peanut butter, when I the ones that I left out, or even if I took this one out on the trail for the day, and it was a hot summer day, when I go to get it, it's a little oily, meaning some of the peanut oil has separated from the bar. Not a mess, not a clumpy, runny mess or anything like that, just a little oily on the outside. That I can live with. However, if you're wrapping it up in parchment paper, wax paper, or even brown butcher's block paper, you may want to make sure you put it inside of a plastic Ziploc bag for a couple of reasons. One, you don't want that leaking into your pack and staining. And two, to help kind of keep the smells and the flavors inside your pack so animals don't smell it at a distance. All right, let's wrap this video up. Mm -mm. Okay, you know, I only put a teaspoon of, of cayenne pepper in there, but I can taste it. I mean, it's not strong. It's not burning my, my tongue or anything like that. Just enough to give it a little extra boost of flavor. Okay, I better stop. Okay, so if you found this video interesting and you'd like to see more like it, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel. But until I have another video to bring to you, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.